Oh, you join us here today at a nice little park lake near my house. Busy little place, lots of things going on. It's birds, dog walkers, mums with prams, there's people on bikes, you can hear the cars in the background, trains. It's a great little place for a bike, especially in the spring. It's early March, the weather's been quite mild. I've picked myself this lovely little corner here. There's quite a few features, a couple of islands, and it's quite shallow on the back there, so I expect a few fish to move up on there as the day progresses. So I'm just about to make my first cast, and we'll see if I can get a few bites. Okay, one mistake I've certainly made in the spring, and I see a lot of people doing, is using too much bait. Quite often in the spring, in the days like today, it feels really warm, but you know you get cold nights, so the water temperature is still very low, and the fish aren't up for eating loads of bait often. One way to, to fish in the spring is to fish single hook baits or boosted hook baits, and um, that way it gives you as much confidence as you can in actually what, you know, what you're putting out for the fish. So there's a number of things I've got here which I'll, I'll talk through um, and explain why and what I do. First of all, bright hook baits. Um, these are great on their own. The colour is, you know, very important. You can get different days where different colours work. Now, whilst the colour is important, one thing I always do, like to do is boost them up as well, with added flavour, so that when you put a hook bait out there, it's power packed with, with flavour and uh, pH values that the, the fish can pick up on. I just use these little booster pots from Baitworks. There's a few other things you can do. So just a little stick mix. Now this looks oily. You wouldn't want to be mixing this with fish oils because they don't really emulsify in cold water very well. But you can use a hemp oil, which emulsifies a lot easier in lower temperatures. Um, this is just simply made of Atlantic heat stick mix. Um, just mix with the oil and you get some lovely little oily bags made out of that. The other thing to do is if you're fishing uh, kind of bottom baits, just wrap, wrap your hook bait in a little bit of paste. Again, this breaks down, gives off lots of scent and attraction for the fish. They're obviously all kind of your pop-ups. The other thing you can do is use artificial baits, and these are really good because you know they're gonna last for a long time. They're not gonna get taken off by birds and soften up. Um, these are little 12 mil barrels and what I like to do with these barrels as well is to just put a little ring in the top and um, maybe put half a dozen maggots in. Now that gives you a little bit of movement as well. These are again particularly good if there's like craze around or you know anything, any nuisance species that are pecking away at your hook baits. So there's a nice selection of different things. Like I say, in the spring, quite often you just want to get on the fish, put a hook bait that you're really confident in that's full of attraction and you'll catch fish. Well here we are, it's been really quiet. Uh, Jimmy just nipped off to get us some lunch. Would you believe it? My left hand rod just off the edge of that island ramped off and landed himself this lovely mid-double common. Probably 14 pounds, something like that. Really nice fish, long, good scrap. So uh, we'll slip her back and I'll show you what I caught her on. Right, so I'll just show you what I'm using today. Nice and simple, but very effective. I've got about two foot of cable leg core in the weed silk color. There's a lot of debris on the bottom of this lake, certainly from the winds we've had recently and from the autumn leaves. Um, so that blends in really nicely. We come down to some nose trace bees, the leg core version. This is a really safe way of fishing a helicopter or chod system. Basically, if you lose the rig or crack off in any way, the rig is able to pull that top bead off there, which then drops off the leg core and ejects the lead from the fish. Come down, I've just got a little rubber and then a two ounce distance lead. And then I've got 10 inches of semi-stiff end trap. Basically, this helps with the slow sinking bait, just kick the hook bait away from the lead and lay nice and flat on the bottom. I've just got a little break here, just below the shrink tube, which just allows the movement for the rig. And then I've got shrink tube kicked over to give the turning effect when the fish picks the bait up. And I've got a trimmed down bait work sent from hell pop up. Just under the shrink tube there, to aid with the weight that you need to, to just slowly sink that, I've just wrapped some some of the lead from the uh, cable leg core around the hook length before putting the shrink tube on. That just reduces the amount of putter you need and makes it a lot neater when you finally come to cast the rig out. One thing I've noticed, I've had a handful of bream now, so 
I'm just keeping, not much, like I say, it's spring, you don't want too much bait, but I'm just keep trickling in the odd bait every kind of 20 minutes, half an hour. Basically, just if those bream are just picking up the odd freebie, they're not there for the carp. So just keep flicking them out little enough like you would match style, and hopefully that'll help keep the carp coming. Well, here we are. We're just coming into the last half an hour of sunlight, really. The sun's setting down over there. It's been a really hard day. There's not been that many fish showing at all. We've not seen any carp at all, so to have nicked one has been quite good. We're hopeful that I can maybe get a good chance in the last half hour, but you never know. If I catch another one, we'll, we'll come back and see you again. If not, take the tactics I've um, shown you today into the spring. The water's starting to warm up now, um, and the carp are there to be caught. <laughs>